Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people really believe that they can do what they want, when they want. And in today's episode, it's all about the worst parents ever. Guys, I'm talking Karen's destroying birthday parties because their bratty son wasn't invited. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories today. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. So we get a kick out of these entitled people stories, and my husband said that this would be perfect. So I was at the mall shopping when Mother Nature called, and I had to go to the ladies' room. There was a line for the women's room. In front of me, there was a woman with her son that looked about 8 or 9 years old. He was, in my opinion, getting a little too old to accompany mommy in the girls' room. But I decided to mind my own business because I'm not a mom and I don't have to think about those kinds of things. It's finally my turn and I go into the restroom and choose my stall. It's a really big restroom with at least 20 stalls and it's full. I start doing my thing, and I hear women in the stalls next to me shouting, Excuse me, go away, stop, you're too old for that, along with manic giggling from this boy. I'm caught with my skirt up, and it's way too late to change positions when I realize that his tiny hands are on the floor in the stall next to me, getting ready to move on to mine. I immediately warn him to not check my stall, or I'll kick him in the face. At that, Karen says, Excuse me? Her son decides to check anyways, and I'm in a defensive position. As soon as his face peeks under the stall door, I give him a swift kick to the cheek. Lucky for him, I was wearing flats. The kid of course starts screaming and bawling his eyes out, shouting for mommy. And that's when Karen storms over to my stall. The woman pounds on the door as hard as she can, saying, What did you do to my baby? You'd better not have kicked him in the face. I of course ignore her, feeling no guilt, and finish my business. I then open the door and she starts shouting at me saying, Why did you kick my son in the face? I'm calling the cops right now. I respond, Why was he close enough to my stall for me to kick him in the face? Go ahead and call the police. Me and all these women in here will tell them what your son was doing. Karen then says, He's a child. It's normal for them to be curious. Just let him look. That's when I say to Karen, well, I warned him, and frankly, I feel very uncomfortable changing my tampon in front of an underage boy. Now, I'm frankly embarrassed, but I felt she needed to know the compromising position I was in. The women in the bathroom hear, and they begin giggling and snorting at the absurdity of the situation. Karen blushes, and she looks disgusted at my frank remark. A woman near me agreed that he was way too old to be checking on her women's bathroom stalls, and that Karen should be watching her son more closely if she has to bring him into the women's restroom. Karen then says to me, I hope you know that you assaulted a small boy. I'm calling security on you. To which I respond, good. I'll tell them exactly what happened and how he violated the privacy of everyone in the stalls next to me. The woman then leaves, but I guess she felt outnumbered because she didn't call security or the police. Instead, she storms out of there, dragging her son by the wrist while muttering under her breath. Guys, I am double disgusted. Not only by the fact that Karen didn't scold her 9-year-old son for doing something crazy like that, but also by the fact that she let her son crawl around on his hands and knees in a public washroom. And I get it, sometimes you have to bring your kids into the washroom with you while you do your business. But again, you know, tell them to stand in a corner or something. Like, don't allow them to go creeping on others doing their business, and then have the audacity to tell people, Oh, he's just curious, let him look. Again, some entitled people, I tell ya. So when I was small, I was in a car accident, which damaged my eyesight and the look of my eye itself. Now it's not really a lazy eye, my pupil just lazily rolls around my eye most of the time, and it can't be controlled. So the other week, my mother hosted a great party with barbecue and everything, and invited all of her work friends and some friends from the neighborhood. Innocent, right? Well, not really. So I was eating with my friend when a kid comes to our table. It was a cute little girl whom I've never seen before. The girl said she was lost and she was looking for mom. So I lower myself to her level to ask about her mom so we can find her. But as I did, she ran off while crying. I didn't think anything of it because sometimes kids don't like talking to strangers so I just shrug it off. There were a lot of parents that are more experienced and this is where the fun begins. I was taking another burger that my mom made when Karen and her daughter approached me. Karen says to me, uh, what's that? I respond, what's what, ma'am? 
Karen then says, What's with your eye? Why are you doing that? It made my daughter cry. I was about to respond when Karen goes on and says, What are you doing with your eye? Is that on purpose? Can't you at least look straight and hold it up? That's when I say to her, Do I look like I can? And Karen says, Don't you raise your voice at me, young lady. You do not belong at this party. I ask her why, and Karen says, Because you scare kids. You've scared my daughter. At this time, people hear us, and my mom storms in furious. She explained everything, and Karen had no idea I was related to my mom, and she sends the woman away. The woman swears at my mom before going off. Yeah, so the post ends there, but my goodness, guys, leave it up to a Karen to let a teaching moment go to waste, right? Like, instead of educating her daughter on some differences people may have, she instead went full attack mode on OP, asking what the heck is wrong with her and telling her that she doesn't belong at the party because she's scaring kids. Way to go, Karen. This happened when I was having a cigarette in a quaint country pub garden in the east of England. The place is stunning countryside, dotted with local pubs, and everyone knows who's local. Due to it being a very nice place, every summer, the pubs are filled with rude, disgusting people and their brats. On this day, I had been out in the lovely flowered pub garden a few times already, as I was drinking beers on a gorgeous Sunday afternoon with friends. Every time I went out, I was thrilled to see this lovely white mother duck, tending to her baby ducklings. There was about seven of them, and the pub staff explained that the mum duck comes back each day to get food from staff members, and to chill in the sun with her fluffy ducklings. So there I am, back in the pub with my mates, when a Karen and her four snotty, loud, disgusting brats enter. They proceed to make loads of noise and generally ruin the vibes, but we ignore them. After a while, I walk outside for my final smoke, and I'm followed by Karen and her kids. It turns out she smokes too, so we both light up and ignore each other, and immediately her kids spot the mother duck and her babies. They all squeal and run to the birds, and to be honest, they were so loud. That's when I looked at the mom, already expecting her to say something reasonable like, hey, calm down now, you don't want to scare the babies. But instead, she just watched her kids harass these ducklings. I watched the mother duck panic and try to usher her babies away from the kids, but they all ran up and surrounded the birds, trapping them all in a corner by the wall. They then proceed to start grabbing at the babies, pulling at their wings, and trying to pick them up. That's when the mother duck and her babies start to quack in panic. Outraged, I look at Karen and see that she's smiling and she's taking out her phone to record her kids, as if this is the sweetest thing in the world. I then turn back to the kids and shout, Hey, don't touch the babies. Just look at them. Of course, Karen hears me and she turns to me with a screwed up face and says, Don't you speak to my children like that. They aren't doing any harm. That's when I look back to see all the kids still grabbing at the babies and distressing the mum. And one of the kids has successfully picked up a baby duckling by its wing, which causes me to scream, put those effing babies down right now. Hearing me yell at her kids again, Karen turns to me with a death stare this time. And she starts to say, if you talk to my boys like that again, I will. And that's when I interrupt her. And at this point, I look at her with an even deadlier stare. And I say in a shaking voice, that duck is a mother too. And if you don't do something, I will manhandle your babies the same way they're treating hers. The woman then looked at me like she was going to argue, but she saw I wasn't kidding. She then shouts at her kids to stop, and they storm inside, but not before pointing her cell phone camera in my face and screaming, this idiot must be fun at parties. At that, I finish my cigarettes and watch the ducks leave the garden looking panicked. When I got back to my table, I found out that the woman was making a complaint about me to the bar staff. They came over and said that the Karen told them that I threatened her kids. I denied the threat. I told them that her kids were aggressively grabbing the ducklings, and I politely asked them to stop. They asked Karen whether her brats had grabbed the ducklings, and she said, They only wanted to hold them. My kids wouldn't hurt a fly. The bar staff then told her and her brats to leave, and when she kicked up a fuss, they said, Those ducks are locals, lady. F off. I love how everyone just defended that mother duckling and her little ones, guys. And OP is a hero for defending the defenseless at that very moment, guys. Like, what a way to get a Karen to control her kids, though. If you don't tell your kids to stop manhandling those ducks, I'll have to destroy your whole family. Pretty much what he said, right? 
Okay, so first off, some context. I have a handicapped son who we'll call Noble. He's wheelchair bound, nonverbal, and he requires help with pretty much all daily living tasks. This one happened a few years ago when we first moved to Washington State. Noble's wheelchair at the time was too big for him. We bought it secondhand because he had outgrown his previous one, but he was less than a year away from insurance buying him a new one. Anyway, due to it being oversized, it had a certain benefit. The footstays were just out of his reach, but they made a handy seat for his little brother to sit on if he got tired. His brother was three or four years old at the time. On this day, we were at a park that had the nice oversized special needs swings, with Noble, his brothers, and some friends. Noble loves to swing, and we go to the park often, to the point that when the other regulars see us, they know to clear the special need swing for him. This day, they did not. So Noble's brothers ran him around a bit, getting all kinds of laughs and squeals out of him, until a swing came open. I put Noble in the swing, and his brothers asked if they could continue to play with the wheelchair. I said, sure, so long as they were careful, and they brought it right back. The boys proceed to take turns, running around the park, sitting in, or being pushed in the wheelchair, with my youngest usually riding the foot prompts. This lasted for a few minutes before they got bored, brought it back, parked it next to the swing set, and went to play. After a few more minutes, Noble's getting tired, his head's dropping, and he isn't laughing anymore. When Noble gets tired, that's it, he turns full ragdoll. I slowly bring the swing to a complete stop, and from the corner of my eye, I see the wheelchair slip away. Thinking it's my son's, I say, leave the wheelchair. I'm going to feed Noble. The wheelchair continues to move away, and that's when I see two entitled brats, 10 to 12 by the looks of them, arguing over it. I say to them, hey, that's my son's wheelchair, leave it alone, I need to put him back in it. That's when kid number one says, but we want to play in it. Kid 2 says, yeah, just like those other kids. I say to the boys, those other kids were his brothers and friends, but I need to put him back in it now. Noble has stopped swinging at this point, and he slumped over in the harness, worn out. I step over and grab the handle to the wheelchair, pulling it away. And kid 1 and 2 says, hey, it's our turn, let us play on it, that's not fair. I say to them, no, this is not a toy, it's a medical device that my son needs. The two boys finally seem to take notice of Noble, and boy number one asked, what's his problem? They didn't ask what's wrong with him, but what's his problem? Now I wear my emotions pretty openly, and I may have responded a bit more harshly than usual. I say to the boys, he's handicapped and he needs his wheelchair, that's his problem. So I'm pulling the wheelchair over and starting to get it ready when Mama June, aka Karen, comes rolling up. The woman comes up to me and says, what are you doing? My boys want to play. I say to her, I'm getting my son's wheelchair so I can feed him. The woman looks over at Noble and says, why don't you just feed him there on your lap? Noble is small, yes, but when worn out, he needs to be in a seat to be fed. And I don't want to feed him in the swing or on my lap. I say to the woman, no ma'am, he needs to be in his seat, now please, let go of the wheelchair. The woman has her hand on the wheelchair, leaning on it like she almost needs the support. But she huffs and starts backing away, and I turn to Noble, thinking it's over. I have Noble unstrapped, and I'm about to turn around when I hear, look mama, he's got drugs. With Noble in my arms, I spin around, and kid number one has pulled Noble's insulated lunch bag out of the backpack, on the rear of the wheelchair, which also has his anti-seizure medications in it. That's when I scream, put that down, those are his meds. And Karen says, don't you yell at my boy. Without strapping Noble in, I reach out and snatch the lunch bag away. One of the lunches falls out, but thankfully it doesn't burst open on the ground. The kid still has his medication though, and I say, give me back his medication. Karen takes the meds from her son and says, stop yelling at my son. I then motion to Noble in the wheelchair and say, are you kidding me? Are you still on this? You're denying a handicapped child his equipment and his medication? Do you want me to call the cops? The woman huffs and says, by the time they get here, we'll be long gone. When she said that, I got pissed. Now, I would never hit anyone, but I step up to this cow. The woman steps up as well, and I say, give me my son's medication, now. I then snatch the bottle out of her hand, but not before Karen says this lovely line to me. F you, you effing bastard. I hope your son dies. 
Hearing that, I'm done. I get right into her face and say, walk away right now. And if you so much as look at my kid again, you are done. The woman actually laughs and says, is that a threat? Are you really threatening me? I just ignore her. I turn, grab Noble, and wheel him off to a bench so I can feed him, hoping it's all over. I sit and start to feed Noble, calming my nerves, and it's all going well. I'm just finishing the first lunch pack when my oldest son, about eight at the time, runs over and says, Hey, those kids have Noble's iPad. And all I could think of is what? So I reach into the back of the wheelchair, and sure enough, the iPad that Noble uses for communication and entertainment's missing. I curse myself for not checking for that and look over. I see the iPad, in its protective case, in the hands of kid number two, jabbing at the surface, and I'm righteously pissed off right now. I grab the wheelchair and storm over, food still all over Noble's mouth, and I scream, Give me back my son's iPad! The two kids look up and say, F off, it's ours, we found it. I respond, in my son's backpack, now give it back, you little thief. And that's when Mama June comes in again, shouting at me saying, Why are you harassing my boys again? I look at her and say, your brats stole my son's iPad. The woman says, no they didn't, that's theirs. I then point at it, and Noble's name's written in big block letters on the case and say, His name is on it. Karen looks down, with no hint of embarrassment, and then back at me and says, So what? I'm sure you can afford a new one. Well, spoiler alert, I can't afford a new iPad. I tell the woman that's a medical device he needs to communicate. Now give it back. She then looks down at Noble and says, That little man don't need to talk. If I was done before, I was so far past now that anyone within 50 miles should just run. I let the wheelchair go and step up, pushing it behind me so Noble doesn't get caught up in this. I then say to her, I don't know what your problem is, but if your little sons don't hand back my son's equipment right now and leave this park, then I will do everything in my power to absolutely destroy you. Starting with your SSI. And hearing that, her eyes go wide. Now I was bluffing so hard at this point, and I continue saying, yeah, I have an in with social security, motioning towards Noble. I then look past her and motion towards a car in the parking lot, and I say, I'll get your car impounded in no time. And you know what? Knowing your license plate number, I can find out anything I want about you. Won't the police and social services like to know how you harassed a handicapped child? stole his medicine and equipment, the woman stammers something unintelligible and damn near falls back to the ground. She then looks at her sons and grabs the iPad. They were shocked. Probably never heard anyone talk to her that way. She then hands it back to me and says, I'm sorry, please, please don't. I grab it, and the screen is just filthy but undamaged, and I say, just go. She leaves with her two brats in tow. My boys and their friends are just staring at me shocked, and I tell them to go play, while wheeling Noble back to the bench to finish feeding him. Moments later, I hear a car tearing out of the parking lot. It's a beat up piece of crap, but I don't care. I finish feeding Noble and take him to the van to load him up. As we finish mounting up, I see that same piece of crap car pulling up, with Karen in the passenger seat and the kids in the back, and a super pissed off looking dude driving. They didn't see me, I just drive off like nothing happened, and the boys, watching out the side and back windows, report that the dude just screeched to a halt in the middle of the parking lot and stormed towards the playground. I'm glad we bugged out when we did. Yeah, I'd say so, probably pissed off dad coming to the park to start a fight or something. Like, I just feel so bad for OP for having to go through that. Like, what kind of terrible parent lets their kid harass and steal from people, and actually condones that behavior? This happened a long time ago. When it was my 11th birthday, me, my friends, and my sisters all went to Pizza Hut together with our parents. All who were invited to the birthday party got the buffet, meaning we could eat as much as we wanted. I had talked to my friends about the party at school a week beforehand and told them that my mom had it planned out. Practically everyone in my class was invited, except for one. There was a kid in my class at the time who we'll call Entitled Brat. This kid picked on everyone and would often make fun of me for stuttering as I had a slight speech impediment. For obvious reasons, I had decided to not invite him to my birthday party. Well, as the party took place, the staff brought out our favorite pizzas and even gave me a special badge since it was my birthday. 
While me and my friends were eating, Karen and her troll of a son come into the restaurant, and they head straight to our privately booked area. The woman went up to my mom and questioned her, saying, Why was my son not invited to your kid's birthday? Getting right in my mom's face. My mom tells her, If your son was nicer and didn't pick on my daughter, he would have had an invite. I'm sorry, but you and your friend aren't invited. She then calls my mom an awful mother and says, Your daughter doesn't deserve to have a party if my son's not invited. That's when the manager is called out, and Karen's told to either go to another table and make an order or leave. Karen screams about her kid being entitled to a buffet because he was invited. My mom, of course, tells the manager that the boy's not a part of the group, and Karen loses it. She was told to go home multiple times by my mother, but she wouldn't. As this is happening, the staff in the back bring out a chocolate birthday cake for me. Karen, seeing all the kids excited, runs over to the staff and smacks the cake from the tray in the poor lady's hands, splattering it on the floor. Seeing that, I effing cried. I screamed so hard that my throat hurt. That's when my mom went over to Karen and she starts pushing her, telling her that it wasn't her party to ruin. That she had no right to crash our party like that and make me cry. So long story shorter, the police were called and Karen was dragged out, along with her kid who watched on as the chaos happened. I guess he thought he would get his way. Mom took us all home after the manager told us the buffet would be free as compensation. The manager also gave me a special pink cola glass as a gift before I left. Well, ain't that something, crashing a birthday party and destroying it because your son wasn't invited. Like, great job, mom. Now your son will be extra not invited to birthday parties. Like, how did she think that was going to go, though? Did she really think that she was going to show up, get aggressive with OP's mom, and then OP's mom would be like, oh, okay, your son can join the party. Yeah, right, Karen. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, it's an r slash I don't work here lady episode, where a Karen accidentally destroys her husband's career by yelling at OP. It's such a funny story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.